increasingly true. Um, let, let me say we're going we're to go back and pick up where we were. Before we do, I just want to say Colin Turnbull is the author I was mentioning earlier who wrote The Forest People and the Mountain People. And uh, The Forest People in particular is both a, a wonderfully romantic introduction of the pygmies of, of uh, Zaire, but also uh, has a very poignant description at the very end of what happened to, to the, those who had any kind of, uh, of weakness in that kind of world. Let me go back. Remember, we talked about the notion that to grasp the dangers and opportunities of the third wave information age, we must understand its characteristics, learn its principles, invent new habits, institutions, and systems, and sometimes invent new words and new meanings. And I want to start with the very first of those because each of them is different. So I'm going to start by talking about understanding its characteristics. The best way to learn characteristics is the listen part of listen, learn, help, and lead. I mean, people say, how can I learn this? My answer is go around your hometown. You don't have to go to MIT or Georgia Tech. I mean, who in your hometown is doing something interesting? Go listen to them. People love to talk about what they do well. So just start listening. And, and what, what you'd ideally have around the, around the country, uh, and this is something Benjamin Franklin helped create when he founded the American Philosophical Society and the public library and all sorts of uh, voluntary associations, is you'd have people who got together and said, let's study this. What does it mean? What is everybody in our community doing? What, what's happening in our industry? How, what, what are the characteristics? And you just start listing them. You know, for example, laptops clearly are going to give people a greater level of freedom. Why? Because they are dealing back with an embedded base. It's not that the society is freer. It's that the individual's freer because there's this huge embedded system of the telephones and of, of the internet and of various uh, bulletin boards. So it's actually very sophisticated, but the net result for you is you can be very freestanding. How can you first pick this up? I mean, I first picked it up watching people in airplanes. You all of a sudden find on, a, on virtually every airplane you, fly, you fly, fly on, there are six or eight or ten people now using a laptop. Well, you say to yourself, oh, this is a characteristic. And so part of it is just keep your eyes open. Characteristics bubble up at you. And if you start making lists of them, you begin to say, gee, I'll bet these are characteristics of the thaw. That's why I mentioned blue jeans earlier. Somebody mentioned during the break, women also wear, now wear, more and more women wear suits. That's true, but it's true. You know, again, go around the planet and look at differences in levels and speed of adaptation. It's truer in America than it is in Europe. It's truer in Western societies than it is in Asian. And then look at the enormous stress in a place like Iran and their view of women in the context of this emerging world and how non-competitive it is to isolate slightly over half your population from being productive. So when you go to a truly fundamentalist Islamic society, they are, they are literally ruling out of the game over half their population in terms of competitive skill, competitive ability. And so you've got to look at this whole pattern. As you begin to think through the characteristics, and that, that's the scouting phase. Just list them. Don't even try to make sense of them. When you start to get enough characteristics, you want to learn the principles. Why are these things there? One of the principles is electronic is going to replace paper. And you're, just, you're just seeing it happen. So if your choice was to hire somebody who could use a manual typewriter or somebody who was used to software packages, and you're trying to get clerical work done, which one is more likely to be responsive to where we're going? Now, more and more things are freestanding with 800 numbers. 800 numbers are cheaper and cheaper. And if you combine that with FedEx and UPS and other overnight delivery systems, you can now set up a very small business in your basement connected to the entire world by an 800 number using, again, the embedded system. I did, I did an interview this week for FedEx, which will be seen by 100,000 workers worldwide. So you have this huge, complex, sophisticated system that lets your single little business be successful which might teach you to look around and say, what are the big systems that are available that I can use pretty cheaply? I mean, your investment's $11. They've got to take your package from you, get it to where you want it to go, do it on time, and they get to make money if they can do it for $11. So you have an $11 system, which is a worldwide system. And suddenly, small businesses can be connected to the planet. Now consider that with the, the, the industrial age vision of what a small business was, which was a local mom and pop operation that only had a local marketplace. So you get into more and more of these kind of things. Then as you see the characteristics, and, you, and I describe them as putting dots on the wall. You know, like remember the dot, connect the dots when you were a little kid and you'd, you'd go from one to two to three and it would turn out to be a rhinoceros or something. So you're putting dots up. That, that's the gathering the characteristics. 
Then you're trying to figure out what are the principles that tie the dots together. Is this an animal or is this a spaceship? Because you're trying to guess ahead. You're trying to get ahead of the dots. Okay? Then you say, okay, now that I'm beginning to get the principles, what are the new habits, institutions, and systems that matter? I'll give you an example. In the high water mark of the industrial age, which included television, you could be a couch potato. As long as you could turn the TV on, you could lay there and the TV would amuse you. You can't be a couch potato and interact with a computer bulletin board. Because you have, to, you have to respond. And in fact, reading will go up in the third wave. And so will typing. So will writing. Because you won't be able to get out of it. So you, you could make an argument, I got laughed at the other week for talking about laptops for poor kids. You could make an argument that getting people interactive systems which, which can only be communicated with by typing and can only be communicated with by reading would probably be the most powerful way to get people to be literate. Now, how much are you willing to spend for each literacy? Well, if you're talking about the total number of teachers you'll hire, the total number of hours you'll spend on this child, and you said, what if I could find a freestanding device that that child could use that had the same effect, would it be okay? How do we get them to cross that bridge? Because the truth is, in the information age, you have to be more literate, not less. And all of the high end of industrial age, we're all going to cease to be literate. We'll all sit around McLuhan's vision. Now, that doesn't mean TV's going away. If there's an earthquake in Kobe, that's the fastest way to see the earthquake. And in fact, if you watch stockbrokers now and money managers, they have a little screen up, in the, up, up on their computer. So they're <coughs> typing away, but they got the TV on. And they can switch. Or they've got a screen where they're running the AP stories. And as soon as a big one breaks, they can turn on the TV in their own screen. You've seen the commercials now where you, you have the TV and the telephone and the fax and the email and all of your records all on the same computer screen. And you're watching four windows simultaneously. Which is why, by the way, if you go back and look at a Strauss waltz, and then you look at the speed of MTV, you look at a movie made in the 30s and the, the rhythm of the movie, and then you look at a movie made today, People are in the habit of looking on the surface at more things faster and getting absorbed in fewer of them. It's a very different pattern of relationship. As you start to invent the new habits, sometimes you're going to have to invent new words and new meanings. Microwave. Cellular. Internet. Now this is not new. Horseless carriage. Automobile, which is French, means self-moving. Uh, electric guitar, which is in fact not a guitar at all. It's, a totally, it's, a, it's an electronic instrument, which resembles a guitar. But notice how very often we'll use bridging words. So part of the bridge will be back here to the frozen, so we still feel secure. But in fact, we're beginning to move through to a different world. 